Welcome to the Wissensspritze, presented by Catalysts. Today's topic is Hidden Champions, presented by Christoph Steindl. Have fun! Uh, let's first look at the definition of Hidden Champions. A Hidden Champion is number one, two or three in the global market or number one on its continent. The market position is generally determined by market share. A Hidden Champion has a revenue below four billion dollars that is just to uh, differentiate them from the large corporations. And there typically, there typically is a low level of public awareness about the hidden champion. One doesn't typically know them. Let me give you an example. Jungbunslauer is one of those hidden champions. When you're drinking Coca-Cola, you, the name Jungbunslauer is unlikely to be the first thing that springs to your mind. However, Jung Bunzlauer is an Austrian-Swiss global leader that supplies the citric acid for every Coca-Cola produced and sold worldwide. Let's give me, give, I'll give you another example, that is Tetra. Do you have a fish tank, an aquarium? If so, you may know Tetra Min, the most popular food for ornamental fish. Tetra is the world market leader in aquarium and pond supplies, and its market share is 3.6 times higher than that of the closest competitor. So there are a couple of those companies and we can learn something from them. What's so interesting about those hidden champions? Well, the hidden champions grow faster than their competitors and not just in terms of revenue but also in terms of profitability and in terms of headcount. It is interesting that they keep growing, their growth rates do not decline over time. Even if they are already large, they become larger and larger. Hidden champions seem to actually profit from difficult conditions. They survive downturns better than their industry. And they grow their market shares when others buckle under the pressure. Hermann Simon has been studying hidden champions for over 20 years. He analyzed them and provides us with invaluable lessons from his studies. I like his book a lot. It is full of valuable insights. And of course, I try to put some of those lessons into practice here with Catalysts. Hermann Simon crystallizes his studies about hidden champions into eight lessons, which he shows in three circles. The core is strong leadership is expressed in ambitious goals that mobilize and align the energies of all employees. The middle circle encompasses the inner competencies. Depth is required because competitive advantage and superior, superiority can only be created internally. You have to know your business in detail. Decentralization means freedom for entrepreneurial, uh, ent entrepreneurial behavior. Your employees need to be in a position to act like the owner of the company himself. And you need a lot of a high degree of autonomy in their decisions. All of this is implemented and only possible by high performance employees who are willing to put in all their best and to be able to produce the high performance that is necessary. These inner strengths are projected into the outer circle, like hidden champions focus on their individual business. What they do, they do especially well. There needs to be continuous innovation um, in order to retain the competitive superiority and you need closeness to the customer which guarantees that technology and customer needs do not shift apart and all of this takes place on a global scale that leaves room for growth and sufficient size but let's look at some of those lessons in some more detail high performance can only be accomplished with a team that is highly motivated and with a team that strongly identifies with the company the selection of the right employees is the foundation 
and hidden champions select their employees very rigor rigorously. Shirking is not tolerated, that is, people have to deliver what they have promised. You cannot just promise one thing and afterwards step back or hide instead of delivering what you have promised. Employees who do not pull their weight, they are sh swiftly dismissed off, they are removed from the team. The remaining employees, on the other hand, appreciate the co corporate culture. They show extremely high commitment and high performance. This leads also to low employee turnover. The employees that, are, um, that like this culture, they stay with the company. And if we say for long times, then it's typically decades or for the entire life. Many hidden folk champions say that we only do one thing, but we do it right. No one is a master of all trades. I couldn't, I couldn't do the same like the guy here on the photo. For this reason, it is important to concentrate on the field where you think you can become a champion. Hidden champions generally are not geniuses. They cannot do everything, but they focus their limited resources better than others, and they stick with the direction they have chosen until they reach the top position. Focus also includes knowing what you do not want to do, and most bodybuilders know that they should stay away, of, should stay away from politics. Some try and, well, you know. Another lesson is simplicity. Simplicity relates to organizational structures and processes, not only but explicitly here in our focus. Hidden champions are lean. They eliminate, eradicate all internal bureaucracy. Hidden, typical hidden, hidden champions have a one product, one market situation. They ship one product to the entire world. And that automatically permits them to have a simple organizational structure. But if their business becomes more complex, if they develop more products, if it's not just one product line anymore, then they decentralize. In large corporations, only 5 to 10 percent of the employees have regular customer contact. Reinhold Wirth, one of the founders of a global um, hidden champion said, in my experience, one day on the front is a hundred times more valuable than a whole week at clever conferences. In hidden champions, one quarter to half of all the employees have regular customer contact. They are much closer to the customer, not just a, a few people, but half of the entire staff. Hidden champions also orient themselves toward top customers. They want to serve top customers. These top customers are extremely demanding. They have set the highest standards and constant, constantly drive their suppliers to improve their performance. But on the other hand, these top customers are also excellent references. Since if you can serve one of those top customers, that obviously eases the access to the rest of the market. Hidden champions use their customers as internal performance drivers. They want to have top customers as their clients and then they want to satisfy their top customers. That means that they have to become more and more um, productive. And many hidden champions also became global by sailing in the wake of their top-notch customers. Meaning if my customers are uh, present around the world, then my products become visible around the world. Another saying from Hidden Champions is, we have always had more work than heads to do it, and that's how it should be. If people are not challenged to work hard, they resort to unproductive activities like writing memos, holding meetings, and drafting unnecessary guidelines. Most of the intrigue and bureaucratic hassle that plagues large corporations is avoidable when there is an abundant amount of work. The condition more work than people also favors simplicity. It keeps employees from inventing unnecessary complexity. You may know that the Parkinson law says employees invent the work that keeps them busy. This law, the Parkinson's law, simply doesn't stand a chance with hidden champions. 
having more work than people is not only good for productivity, but it actually keeps people happier. <laughs> A strange thing. If you have too many people, that kills productivity and also fosters dissatisfaction. If you are delivering value regularly, if you are, well, even if you are under heavy load, you stay much more satisfied with your job. And another quote from a CEO is, in order to be successful, you don't have to be clever. It is sufficient not to be stupid. Here are some of the serious mistakes that you can find in many organizations, but that hidden champions typically avoid. The first, first thing is profits are maximized for the short term. Hidden champions don't do that. The general direction is changed frequently. Hidden champions don't do that. They know the goal, they know what they have to reach, and if it takes a decade, then so be it. Diversification is often thought of as a means to grow revenues. However, that often means, also means a drift away from the core business. Hidden champions stay with their one product, one market philosophy. Risky financial activities are often tolerated as a means to hopefully grow the profits. Acquisitions seem to be the fast path to growth. However, hasty or oversized acquisitions often become dangerous. And outsourcing is often seen as a great chance to cut costs, but hidden champions are not so, f so deep into cutting costs, but much more into growing market shares. So to summarize it, um, there is much um, that we can learn, but of course much of it is common sense more or less. Only taken together, if you consider all those practices, if you read through the book, you will see that these lessons can be very powerful. It is, I think, the combination of those lessons that make the difference. And if you want to know more, get the book, read it, think about it. As always, the biggest challenge, I think, is to get from theory to practice, to implement those lessons. That maybe may not be so simple as it looks, but it seems to be worth the effort. We, we strive to do that. <laughs> we are far away from being a hidden champion, but um, that's our goal, of course. If you want to discuss it with me, post your thoughts or questions on the website of the Vispri Wissenspreitzer. Um, ask questions right now. Anyway, my name once more is Christoph Steindl and here are my contact details.